Thank you for joining me for another Infinite Woman interview. I'm Tana Marshall, and today we're talking to Leah Evangelista, fairy godmother and magical content creator. Let me tell you about her. Leah is a lifelong student of the spiritual and metaphysical. She has read tarot professionally since her teens and uses it today as a tool for shadow work exploration. She's also an artist, specifically makeup as an online content creator. Leia hosts an ongoing weekly creative collaboration on Instagram that's open to anyone who wishes to share their arts and crafts or connect with other creatives. Pro art experience not required. While multi-passionate by nature, Leia's general goal in everything she does is to inspire her audience to embrace who they are and find the magic in whatever that may be. Welcome, Leia. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you so much, Tana. I am so excited to be here. Me too. You are so beautifully magical and myst mystical, and I love your content on Instagram. But let's talk about where your journey started. I want to go way back and talk about when you first got into reading tarot cards when you were a teenager. So tell us about that. I started reading tarot when I was 17 going on 18. I've always been interested in, like you said in your intro, spiritual stuff, and it was very intriguing. So back then, there wasn't a lot of stuff or teachings on tarot like there is today. Today, it's very broad. You can use tarot for so much, even for arts, even for journaling versus back then a lot of it was predictive and that's how I started and I realized that as much as I loved it I felt like I wanted to take it in a different direction that's what led to me exploring shadow work and it took a lot of years many years before I got to the point where I felt oh this is the way that I prefer to do it versus telling people you are going to meet the person you've been waiting for forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. And by all means, there are people who are very good at that sort of thing. I've met them. They're naturally gifted. But me personally, I felt like I resonated more with shadow work exploration, helping people connect with parts of themselves that they've discarded or swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at with it today. You also do YouTube videos and you do stuff with your husband, which is really fun and really cute. And sometimes you bring your daughter into that. But I love that you're working on relationship stuff and, and just life issues and people's stuff from that mystical place of intuition with utilizing the cards and all that kind of thing. And I love that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. And the, I know, and I think I first discovered you, we met through Colette Baron reed Yay, Colette, we love Colette. And she was talking about what you do. And she said, oh, I love your stuff on Instagram. So I went and found you and I was like, oh my God, I have to follow her. I love her. You do all of these amazing things and these collaborations where you invite other people to do that, to do that too. How did that start? That started in 2020 when a lot of people were home and... I discovered a makeup community that was already starting to do that. Some people were inviting others to create looks based on a theme. And I figured, why not do it too? But back then, what I was focused on was retro themes. Because I love <laughs> history. I love anything retro, vintage. So that was the focus back then. But after that, I figured I wanted to make it more open. That way, those who aren't exactly into what some people call old stuff. <laughs> because you call the retro stuff old stuff? Yeah, some people who don't really have an appreciation for it, they just look at it like, ah, that's old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, so I figured open it up a little bit more and have different themes that... Yeah anyone can participate in, regardless of their interest. I mean, some weeks probably some people feel like, no, that's not my thing. But other weeks, they'll be more inclined. And yeah. 
I continued doing that. I did take a break, an Instagram break for two years because I learned the lessons of being too available and too open. And then before I knew it, I was energetically run down. So I did take a two year break, but I came back last year and I figured I'll do better about taking care of myself and my, my energy so that I can sustain it. Yeah. And you know what, that's, that's a really good point to share with people because everybody wants a lot of attention on social media, but you have, I mean, it's not only social media, but it's in life. You have to learn to set those boundaries to protect your energy, especially if, if something is taking off and then you're in demand and everybody wants a piece of you and your stuff is really beautiful and amazing. And I know you get tons of comments on every post that you put out and you're asking people to participate. So they're participating. So that that's a lot of energy going on there. So I'm really glad that you took that time to take care of yourself and came back with firmer boundaries in place. Yes, absolutely. It was a huge lesson. And I sometimes feel like, wow, that was hard. But without it, I wouldn't have learned. And I'm not saying that we should go through really difficult situations every time to learn. But that drove the lesson in. <laughs> and yeah, I did a lot of therapy in those two years that I was gone because I wanted to understand. I've always been into self-development, personal growth, but surprisingly, I only started doing therapy in those years that, that I took a break. Mm -hmm. oh. I think a lot of people took, got into therapy <laughs> during those years for various reasons. But speaking of personal growth and personal development, this I'm excited to talk about. You have shared the stage with Jack Canfield. I want to hear about that. Yes. So in the 2010s, I regularly attended Jack Canfield's workshops. Now they're mostly online versus back then. I would actually go to where they were being held, which was in Scottsdale, Arizona. In the first workshop, I attended it. So I, I was an attendee. But after that, I figured I wanted to do more, to be part of the team. And so for a few years, every year, I came back and assisted Jack. And, and it was marvelous. It was wonderful. I got to see so much that I had only dreamed of when I was younger because I grew up in the Philippines. So I was reading chicken soup for the soul, <laughs> <laughs> which Jack started. As you mentioned earlier, we met because of Colette Baron Reed mm -hmm. and I've had a few opportunities online, not in person yet, because I started actively attending her, her workshops and her offerings during the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I didn't, go to <laughs> any of the in-person ones that were offered before then. But I've had a chance to chat with her a few times and it's been amazing. She's spot on mm -hmm. about the things that she's told me about myself, things that I didn't even give any hint or clue about anything. <laughs> and then she goes right into what seems like my diary or my journal. Yeah, yeah amazing. It's, it's been amazing. She's... This is showing me that I really have been on a journey that until you've asked the questions, I've forgotten a lot of it already because I'm also certified as a hypnotist and I'm not even using that. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Oh my gosh. That was in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. So when I took that course, when I was certified, that was in Marina Del Rey, when I lived in LA, because I live in the Midwest now. I've also moved a lot. That's part of my story in life. And you've had so many experiences in general, and you've lived in many different places. I'm so fascinated by that because, I'm, you know, the tarot cards and Jack Canfield, and now you're a certified hypnotherapist and now you're you're doing the makeup thing and i feel like what you do is is spiritual way beyond just makeup on your face i feel like there's this amazing 
quality to, to what you do that the things that you are expressing externally, it's, it's like what's inside of you is coming out and being expressed. And I feel like it's such an inspiration to people. And I, I know you can look at it and say, wow, that's really beautiful. But I feel like people can feel your energy coming through that because there's some really amazing designs that that you've done. And I just, I want to touch on a few of them and I want to show some of them here because they really fascinated me. There was one in particular that you did recently that looked like raised drops of water kind of coming to, do you know the one I'm talking about? And I yes. the theme, what was the theme of that one? For that one, I wanted to do something that looked 3D. A lot of that was made of dried hot glue. <laughs> not really <laughs> yes some of the droplets were gems that you can get on on amazon yeah. <laughs> that look just like water droplets and i glued them on using fall slash glue <laughs> okay yeah because you you do a lot of glitter i mean a lot of your work is so detailed and i love that you always have the one look and then you'll have several different pictures from different angles and sometimes there's a real close-up of maybe your eye where you can see all these little tiny details and sometimes little jewels that you've put on there and you, the lashes that you put on the detail i'm glad that you put some of those photos up there that are so close up because it's so amazing to see how much work goes into everything that you do oh thank you the story behind makeup because you had mentioned that it goes beyond just the actual makeup is I didn't want to do makeup. I've embraced it. <laughs> but back in the day, it was just a job because I was looking for something that I could do that paid. And I was thinking, so what am I good at? And there were a bunch of things that I was trained to do, <laughs> like mm -hmm. since I was young, meaning I've been trained to be in front of people because I wasn't pageants and singing contests wow. so all that but there comes a point in your life where it seems like none of the things you did when you were younger well at least for me apply anymore or at least at that moment in time none of it seems relevant so I figured I would go with being an artist, I looked towards the practical side of that. So I was thinking, what do people need artists for in this day and age? Well, people get married, right? <laughs> so people need a makeup artist. And that's when I decided I was going to train and I was really going to throw myself into it. But as a job, I didn't think of it as a passion back then. Mm -hmm. Because now, after doing it for many years... I finally accept it. It seems like a door, a pathway has opened up for me by doing this, not necessarily in the way that I was doing it, which is I worked for MAC Cosmetics for a very long time, many years, and that was great training. I think that the purpose of that was to really help me hone my art mm -hmm. and to have a lot of experience too, just in many ways, because I met so many people and I also worked on my own time as a bridal makeup artist or as a makeup artist for special occasions. And so my skills grew because of that. And now finally I'm using it, those skills, I'm using those as a content creator because that's what I've arrived at. After all this time, that's what resonates with me now to create art that inspires, that brings emotions up in people, that through the collaboration that you'd mentioned earlier, people can also explore on their end what creation can do for them or what that can bring up in them. I love the evolution because you, you are your own canvas now. I wanted to ask you, you're also starting to do more tutorials and I'm thrilled about that especially when you show how you do some of these elaborate looks. Do you plan on doing more tutorials like that? Absolutely. There's been a very positive response to it because at first I was thinking, oh, who still really wants to watch this? There's so many people who do this same thing. But I think 
when people follow you, they want to see you do it. Yes. Yeah. And so I think I am going to keep doing it. Yes. I'm so happy because really, and it's beautiful to see and to look at like, wow, but to see you doing it and, and showing us what you're doing and how you did it. I feel like it'll make it feel like it's more doable if other people want to do something that elaborate and that amazing. So I'm so glad you're doing that. Thank you for tutorials. Yeah. And thank you. I wanted to say that to anyone out there who feels like you have imposter syndrome, because I think that, that that is what it was for me. I was thinking, you know, people already know how to do this. So who am I <laughs> to show them? But there's only one person who does things the way you do, even if it is sort of similar to what the base technique is, you still have something to offer that is purely you. Yeah. So that's what I told myself. I'm going to keep doing them. You're sharing other people as well and what they've created, what they've been inspired to do based on the ideas that you've thrown out there. Yes. That's one of my goals. I really want other people who've been inspired by what I put out there to feel safe. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, we can't control <laughs> all the responses that they get, but at least within this community itself, where the regular participants are very supportive of each other, everyone who, who puts an entry out there or, or who submits can feel like, wow, it's okay to just do art. It doesn't even have to be technically perfect. Mm -hmm. Kind of like an art journal. And then they can see their evolution too, because every week there's a different theme. And so if they keep participating, they'll see just how much they've changed and how they've grown. Yeah. And I, that's just so nice that you give other people a platform on your platform. I know you said to me like, well, you can put your baking stuff in here. Cause I'm like, I don't do the crazy makeup. <laughs> I know I have yet to send you anything baking related for the theme that you put out there. But, you know, I used to, I think I told you I wanted to be a makeup artist years ago, but I, I got into wanting to be special effects, like the gore stuff. I used to watch slasher movies all the time. Like, how do they do that? And I used to do all this crazy stuff for Halloween. I would be something dead. My boss let me do what I'd give people slit throats and bullet holes and bruises. So I went a completely opposite direction. And then I just ended up doing it for fun on Halloween. Once in a while, people are like, hey, I'm going to a party. Can you make me dead? Can you do this? And I'll be like, sure. So it's not the same as you, but it was a creative outlet that I loved and thought was so fun. And, and it was an expression for me. It, it really is interesting because people become a canvas. I, I, I want to show people a lot of your images here um, because you, you have done several also that were mermaid themed. And I'm trying to remember the other themes that you've done. Just a lot of mystical themes, really. And also some dark stuff because with shadow work, you know, we acknowledge that beauty. <laughs> Mm -hmm. of scary stuff and at heart i'm goth <laughs> well you know let's talk about that because i did want to ask you more about the shadow work because you use tarot for shadow work so for those who aren't really familiar tell us a little bit what shadow work is in simplest terms in the simplest terms that i can think of right now it's about exploring what we've denied what we don't want to accept about ourselves sometimes our shadow is comprised of things that we could be really good at but for some reason we don't believe we are worthy of them mm -hmm. like talents mm -hmm. so some people push those talents away and i'll use myself as an example i think that for the longest time being an artist was my shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite embrace it, especially the makeup aspect, because I'd gotten a lot of mixed messages about that growing up. A lot of what we internalize comes from other people's beliefs. Before we know it, we are carrying those. And now we think there are beliefs. For the longest time, I didn't want to own <laughs> that I do makeup. It's just purely a job and I'm going to step away from it at some point in my life. And I've tried. There were times when I tried to step away from it and I would go completely into the more spiritual aspect of what I do. 
I'd say I read tarot. I uh, want to write books on spiritual subjects. It's been proven by my Instagram account. <laughs> they love it. They love the makeup. But I love how you're marrying everything together and the spirituality and the mystical and the magical in, in the makeup. But, you know, I want to ask you about something that you just said. Was there anything culturally that was um, difficult for you getting into makeup? I would say that, and I think too, from what I've seen, that this is true for a lot of Asian cultures, that there's this need for parents to have their kids be certain professions, mm. like let's say being a doctor or a lawyer, something that on paper looks impressive. Mm -hmm. And being an artist, on the other hand, seems like that's a hobby. Yeah, <laughs> that's no not security. something that you're going to make money from. That that makes sense. I, I wasn't sure if it was makeup in particular, but it's just straying from those mainstream careers, right? That that most parents want their kids to have something safe and secure. And but I'm I'm glad that you followed your heart and did what you were called to do. And and. You've been called in many different directions and you followed every call. And, you know, one thing that we talked about before was how mistakes in our life sometimes lead us to where we're supposed to be. So what what mistakes have happened in your life that have helped you become the person you are now? And is that part of the shadow work? Absolutely. Because sometimes we feel really embarrassed that, oh, I chose this. I did this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we don't want to admit to ourselves or keep thinking about that time in our lives anymore as if it never happened. But until we do work on that, it's still there. It's going to keep coming up. And an example that I'm going to give would be a relationship that I was in for seven years. I wasn't even in love with the person that I was with, but because I knew nothing about relationships, as I feel many of us when we are brought up we have our parents as our role models and some get lucky in the sense of wow it's demonstrated to them what love is supposed to be like but what if you're around a lot of dysfunction and not even just in your own home but that's what you're surrounded by mm -hmm. like people around you it seems normal for example that oh they argue all the time so okay you internalize that's what relationships <laughs> are about where you don't necessarily even have to like the person you're with. Because that's one of the takeaways for me when I was little. It seemed like, wow, these people are always fighting. They don't seem to like each other. <laughs> and so I got into a relationship where I felt like I could save that person. I felt like, oh, maybe, you know, together we could do something about that. But being really young, I didn't know that we can't save other people. It lasted seven years. Wow. And my life was, this is an understatement, but it was really affected by that decision. I feel like it was me who was affected more <laughs> by the situation in that my life changed. Now, instead of being so positive and optimistic, at that time, at least, I felt so down and like I'm not capable of doing anything anymore no more bandwidth no more energy because I was in that situation myself mm -hmm. of looking for a place to live my life was fine prior to that but I made that decision and I learned a lot of lessons and I saw for myself what it's like to be in that position that I otherwise wouldn't have been in. And while I am not saying that we should all go through really hard things <laughs> just to learn to be way more compassionate and just appreciate also what you have. Yeah. That's what I learned. In and a now you have an amazing husband. And wow, did it take some time <laughs> before I got to that point. It's like I had to learn so many lessons before I got here. But mm -hmm. I feel that because of what I experienced, that took me on a journey of 
wanting to go even deeper. And I think that's a valid point. If you look at the things in your life that, because I know Byron Katie actually says there are no mistakes. And um, it, it's interesting. I'll tell you a really quick story that um, one of my teachers tells that when she first became enlightened and people started coming to her door to see the enlightened woman, they said, namaste, namaste. And she said, that's right. That's right. Because she didn't know the word and she thought they were saying no mistakes, so ma- no mistakes. And so she's like, yeah, that's right. No mistakes. And it's so it's interesting that that we even say mistakes because these experiences, as long as we learn from them, they, they do make us who we are. I, I think every experience is valid and valuable. And, you know, that's what you've been through. It's all led you to where you are now. And now you're in a great place. I agree with everything you said. At the heart of it, there are no mistakes, really. On the surface, it seems like, wow, you know, how could I have done that? <laughs> yeah. I still, until recently would from time to time beat myself up in my head (laughs) for that because I feel like I quote unquote wasted (laughs) seven years of my life because that is a very long time to be in a relationship that you don't even want to be in but then you start feeling like a bad person for wanting to leave (laughs) I know I know so many people are just like I gotta be nice I can't be mean and we put everybody else first, we put ourselves last, and then that doesn't always work out well. So, and and as you were talking, I was thinking you did not put on your own ac- oxygen mask. <laughs> You're, you put his oxygen mask on and deprived yourself of oxygen. But again, like I said, I think as long as we learn from all of these experiences and we move forward in a positive way, then it takes us to higher and higher levels of of joy and satisfaction and abundance and well-being and all that kind of thing. And And you've used your life in that way. And I I think you've had a mystical, magical life with all of that, just to kind of tie all this together. You know, you started with tarot cards and you you're certified as a hypnotherapist and you've worked with Jen Canfield and now you're doing the makeup and it's, you know, this is a whole new mystical, magical thing. And you're a fairy godmother. I would love to know what is one piece of advice you would give to the women watching who are inspired by all you do and all you've done but not, not, might not feel that they are creative. I would say just show up. Take a step every day. Take a step even if it's small because it will all add up. Whereas if you don't, then you're still in the same place. But showing up before you know it, you'll be somewhere that you had only dreamt of. That's great advice. And I hope everyone that is watching will take that advice and just take one little step. And one little step could be going to follow you on Instagram and participating in your challenges that are so creative and you welcome everybody's submissions and you feature so many people. Is that where people should go to find you? So yes, on Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Leia underscore Evangelista. It will be right here. We will have it right here and it will be in the description below and anywhere else you want people to follow you. I'm keeping my YouTube alive and I do put shorts there. I don't put long form there right now, but my tarot stuff for anybody who's interested, you could definitely go to my YouTube channels. Okay. Well, that will be in the description below too. We'll have all the links there so people can just go and click on it and follow you everywhere and enjoy and absorb all the magic that you are sharing in the world in so many different ways. And I just want to thank you so much for being here, Leah. This has been so great having you. I've loved this conversation. You are really a wonderful fairy godmother. Thank you so much, Tana. It's been a pleasure and I'm so glad I met you. It was such a a form of synchronicity how it happened. So I'm so glad. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Colette. Yeah, but thank you for being here and sharing your mystical, magical, beautiful self with us. And thank you. My pleasure. And thank all of you for watching. I'll be back with more inspiring interviews with amazing women. So remember to subscribe on YouTube. And if you'd like to join the community and get free resources to support your self-care, jump over to my website, tannamarshall.com and take the self-care boundary quiz to find out how well you prioritize your well-being or not (laughs) and sign up to be notified about upcoming events and programs. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. (laughs) 